Welcome to the channel. Today I thought I'd share my uh, selection of uh, nail varnish with you. I have this uh, this lovely yellow number for sunny days and uh, I have this blue one for when it's cold and I have uh, this one over here for, um, well, for special exciting evenings and then I have a couple of clear ones. In shooting nail varnish serves more purpose than you think and fundamentally it's because another term for nail varnish is lacquer and we can find lacquer even in the military on loads such as these. These are tracer uh, heads from a 556 and we can see that they have red marking on top. You can also see that some military cases, uh, especially East European ones, where you have steel cases, that they uh, would apply red lacquer around the case to seal the bullet and the case together in such a way that you wouldn't have ingress of air, water or anything else. Now this guy I built for my pub, they talked about having a bar poured out of epoxy and that everybody could put a little trinket inside. And I thought, great, I'll have a go at that. And I made this thing. Now this is a standard steel AK case that I have. Obviously it's inert, it's fired and uh, it's got no powder inside. I've marked it in the uh, colors of Ukraine because I thought that'd be a nice memorial for the uh, war that we're all currently un and unhappily experiencing. But after I finished making this, I also decided to uh, seal it by adding some sealing. And I don't know whether you can see that, but right there, there's a little place where the sealant didn't take. And the reason the sealant didn't take there is because when I was finished with the mount, I put it on the radiator just to get it to uh, dry off. And a little bubble formed in the uh, lacquer. Now, if a little bubble forms, that means that, want or not, the air inside the case has uh, expanded and pushed outside. And that suggests that there's actually more airflow in these headed up cases in these loaded cases than I would otherwise have expected. Now I don't know whether that's specifically for steel cases and I suspect that in a large way it is specifically for steel cases. I don't think I've ever seen lacquer on a, a brass case. But for steel cases, I mean lacquer is almost always there. I suspect, if you remember one of our previous videos about German World War II 8 mil, the inside of the cases was completely rusted. If those cases had been sealed with a coat of lacquer, we would not have seen the same deterioration. For my target rounds, I always personally use a Sharpie. And I use a Sharpie because I don't think that will have added any weight to the head whatsoever. I think that a big daub of lacquer to the top of the head will add weight. If you're talking about weighing each head carefully for a target round and you then start painting it with lacquer on top, I mean, I don't think it'll do much for the ogive or the weight or anything else which is why I personally would stick to the Sharpie for target ammunition. The trouble with the Sharpie is that it's quite easily and quickly rubbed off. Whereas a lacquer head I mean even with a fingernail I can't make any real uh, efforts here. This is why the military would use lacquer for the heads of their ammunition. This is my subsonic color and if you've watched my video about moderators or cans you will see that I mark my head, my heads with the uh, blue nail polish over here and that way I will know forever that those rounds are subsonic and I mustn't get them mixed up with anything else. As for actually marking up your head, there's a little bit to think about here and I'll show you the way that I do it for uh, uh, marking and sealing is that I start off with a good daub of uh, a lacquer and I'll use the nice red over here for sealing a case. I'll give that like two drops, like so. And then I like, like to add a drop of clear on top because it's just too dark otherwise. I think the rimmel is open. There we go. Let's give that a drop. The rimmel is also nice and liquid. I like that. But uh, if your lacquer is too... Uh, hard there is a solution of course and that solution is to add a bit of acetone which I have over here so we can just bring some acetone across and that'll make it all a little bit runnier and you really want a nice blob but like a drippy blob on the end of your brush you don't want something that is too uh, too solid. The way I mark up these uh, cases is I like to use uh, this attachment here. This is something I've ripped off an old zip spin that was a case sizing tool but 
that just wrote itself off it wouldn't work anymore but I kept the fitting and you see it's got a nice little claw system and I can put a case in that and it'll hold it nice and central and you can see when we spin this that it's actually pretty level you can also just take the uh, case and put it in the chuck but it won't spin as true as it will this way around and at that stage all we do is we prime our brush nice slow and clean rotation and we seal and that's it already important here is of course that uh, I didn't just apply the varnish to the head I didn't just apply the varnish to the case I did it right in that gap between the two and once it's dried we won't have any more air exchange between the, the, the case and the head for applying it to the uh, head you can just about use the exact same mechanism you just add a sort of blob if I were to manufacture these in uh, quantities I'd probably create some sort of dipper and uh, I would combine that with quite a, a, a thin bit of lacquer. I think using the stuff as is, it's just a little bit too thick. I mean, you can see it on here. It's just it, it just adds too much of itself if we compare that to the military stuff. Would I seal cases? Well, I haven't yet. But then again, I don't really reuse steel cases. The, the brass cases I made, I tend to shoot them in a pretty fast order. I think if I were to make something that would go with me on a journey, you know, kind of like 19th century big game hunter where you make like 20 rounds and then you sit on a boat and travel to Africa and then you wander through the swamp in search of a rhino or God knows what. I think in a situation like that where, where a round is going to be with you for a long time in changing climates... I, I think I would. I would actually sit down and I'd finish my ammunition and I would seal it. For the day-to-day -day usage, it's asinine. It's just not worth it. Remember, marking heads is great if the weight of the head is not important. But for anything like a target round, use a good old Sharpie. So that's all I have for you. I hope that was interesting. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.